So, Saw X has been out for a few days now, and I decided for this movie, I didn't want to just do a normal run-of-the-mill review and just skip right into the good stuff. This is, of course, a spoiler warning for Saw X. If you don't want the latest Saw movie spoiled, then go click away from this video right now. But otherwise, uh, let's get into it. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Brock Upside, a place to live, talk, and buy movies. And yes, real quick, in case anybody was curious, I did manage to pick up the super cool Cinemark exclusive Saw popcorn bucket shaped like Billy the Puppet's head. And uh, what's really cool about this one is if uh, you just take it and uh, do a little Izzy's pokesies right there, uh, his eyes light up too. But I'm assuming if you're watching this video right now, you've already seen Saw X, so go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on the 10th Saw movie? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Uh, did you, uh, did you, did you like the part where people chopped their limbs off and bled everywhere? So this movie takes place in between the events of Saw 1 and Saw 2, the best Saw movies in my opinion, and follows John Kramer, played once again by Tobin Bell, as he goes to Mexico for an experimental cancer treatment, only to discover it's one big scam, and he goes to work exacting his brand of jigsaw vengeance. And right off the bat, this movie sets it apart from all the other movies in the Saw franchise because it actually focuses on John Kramer himself for a change, not just leaving it to flashbacks, just a couple scenes here and there in between traps. And Tobin Bell gets a lot to work with this time as Saw X acts more like a character study of John. We see him go into cancer support groups, doctor's appointments, which one of those ends with him catching a janitor stealing from a patient and then it cuts to that janitor inside the eyeball vacuum trap we saw in the trailers. But it, then it turns out that was just John fantasizing on what to do with his janitor, who ends up not taking the stuff from the patient, and he's like... Good choice, good choice. And that was a really fun part of the movie, just seeing how John's brain kind of works when it comes to, you know, setting up these traps and picking his victims and stuff. Like when he goes to Mexico and goes to this warehouse where the doctors are all set up and stuff, it's like right off the bat you're like, oh, that's definitely a jigsaw warehouse, he can totally set up traps in there. And I'm willing to bet probably as he was walking through it, he was like, you know, I bet I could chain somebody to that wall and I could put some razor blades over there in that corner. But after a while you find yourself sympathizing with John. John and see a different side of him, almost a more human side that we haven't seen a whole lot in previous movies, like this one little scene where he helps this kid Carlos fix his bike, that'll come into play later, don't worry. And then after the surgery, John feels like super relieved, like he's got his life back, he starts celebrating, starts throwing away schematics for future traps and stuff, and then he discovers that the whole thing is one big scam, the doctors are not even real doctors, they like work at vets, or they're drug addicts that they're just hired to pose as medical assistants and stuff. Who Oh boy, in that one scene where John learns the truth and gets all angry, it's like, <laughs> Yes, John, get them! And usually in these movies, there's one jigsaw victim you kind of root for throughout the whole movie, like, oh, I hope this person succeeds. Not this time around. Pretty much all of them are absolutely terrible, horrible people who deserve this exact treatment. Especially the one in charge of the whole thing, Dr. Peterson, who we find out is really twisted and straight up evil in a lot of ways, but we'll come back to that part later. After a while, another patient comes barging into the warehouse demanding his money back, finding out it's all a scam, which John doesn't kill or anything, just ties him up to a chair and is like, here, look, I'm punishing them enjoy yourself. Alongside Tobin Bell, we also get Shawnee Smith back as Amanda, Jigsaw's first apprentice from Saw 1 through 3, and it was great to see her again, as I thought she was one of the more interesting apprentices that Jigsaw had, because she survived his trap, and then she became super loyal to him, wanting to, you know, help with his games and, you know, his mission and everything, but she was also always a bit of a wild card, like, a little bit unstable, and just getting too emotionally involved with a lot of the victims and stuff. Which that comes back into play here because there's this one victim, Gabriella, who is a bit of a drug addict, so she tries to help Gabriella as best as she could so she will actually succeed. 
as far as the traps are concerned, they are as gruesome as ever. You got one trap where this one girl has to saw her leg off and suck out the bone marrow, and another where one of the medical assistants, Mateo, has to cut out part of his brain or get straight up fried in the face. My favorite was probably the eyeball vacuum from the beginning of the movie. It just got a real classic Saw movie feel to it, like it's simple, but effective, you know what I mean? And to go along with these traps, we also got the fast-paced, jittery 360 shots again, and the yellow and green color grading back. That, I think, is one of the biggest takeaways of Saw X, is how it really just decided to go back to basics of the original movies, but still adding some new stuff in there to keep it interesting. Which, of course, means we also get Billy the Puppet back as well on his iconic tricycle, which kind of makes me wonder, though, like, how did they get Billy into Mexico, you know what I mean? Like, did Amanda get on a plane and put Billy in, like, her carry-on luggage and the TSA was like, Pfft. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, can, can continue. So, one by one, nearly every Jigsaw victim dies from not escaping their traps. Hey, you know, since this time we're kind of on Team Jigsaw, it was a lot more satisfying where it's like, Ha! Huh, shoulda not been a scam artist you bitch. It then gets down to Dr. Peterson herself, and this was honestly the whole reason I wanted to talk spoilers in the first place. I mean, like I said before, none of the victims in this movie are, you know, necessarily innocent or good people, but holy crap, this doctor character is straight up evil. You get a few hints early on in the movie, like after the one victim dies, she just nonchalantly rips out her intestines and uses them as rope to get this one cart with her phone on it, and she does it like without even thinking. She's like, oh, here we go. That, that, that was a human? No, 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 it's not. It's a corpse. Whatever. Wow, if you don't value human life like that, what else are you capable of? It's then revealed that the other patient John had tied up is actually Dr. Peterson's boyfriend, and then those two turn the tables on John and Amanda, forcing John to get into the final trap. That was one twist I definitely did not see coming, and now in any other Saw movie, if one of the victims managed to kind of get the upper hand on John like that and put him into one of his own traps, give him a taste of his own medicine, I'd be like, yeah, good on you, man. But in this movie, it's like, damn it, I'm Team Jigsaw right now stop that let him kill you but then the ultimate evil act in the movie occurs when dr peterson kidnaps the kid carlos from earlier and forces him into the trap with john as well that is just absolutely messed up having to force a kid into one of Jigsaw's traps, it's like, that's something that Jigsaw himself would never, ever subject a child to. So it's like, you know, when he does not cross that line, but then this doctor does, it's like, what the f Fuck. Thankfully, the final trap, however, is not of the chopping off your limbs variety. It's basically they're on this platform, which is kind of like a seesaw of sorts. They've got individual levers, so if one person on this side pulls the lever, it tips over to them, and then they get a, just a giant bucket of blood just pouring on them, which was, you know, cheesily called bloodboarding by the doctor. It's like one of those, ha 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 ha, so funny, puns, yeah, blood, ew. But John really gets to show his humanity in this one scene as he takes pretty much all of the blood punishment, so Carlos only gets subjected to a tiny, tiny bit. But my one real question there is, where the hell did John and Amanda get that much blood on such a short notice? Like, was it always already there? Did they kill a bunch of cows and take all their blood? I, I don't know. I I'm assuming John's got a blood guy. Like, he he he's got so many apprentices, one of them's got to be a blood guy. I I don't know. But the best part of pretty much every Saw movie is when it gets towards the very end, where the victims think they've succeeded. And then Hello Zep kicks in. Which of course happens in this movie when the doctor and the boyfriend try to leave Amanda, John, and the kid for dead. They grab the money out from the back room, and then you hear When that moment happened, I was like <laughs> Get fucked! Long story short, John was once again playing four-dimensional chess the whole time, having planned pretty much everything that went down, minus the kid getting involved. The doctor and the boyfriend get locked in the back room as it fills with poisonous gas. She kills the boyfriend to use the one opening for fresh air. John, Amanda, and Carlos easily escape and walk away into the sunrise, not the sunset, because 
the sun was coming up, but still, rather victorious ending for John, Amanda, and the kid. The interesting part of that, though, is that the doctor is still alive by the end of the movie, which kind of makes you think she's being set up to be maybe like another secret apprentice that John had, because like every single movie, John has another secret apprentice that we did not know about, okay? Jigsaw has more apprentices than Batman has Robins. So I don't really think she would have been left alive by the end of this movie if she wasn't being set up for like another sequel where we find out she was helping John all along there too. It's just kind of a thought, but one that I feel like is likely to happen. Speaking of setting up more movies, we do get a mid credit scene which takes us back to the iconic bathroom from Saw 1 as Jigsaw and Detective Hoffman, played by Casas Mandalore once again, place the guy who told John about the experimental treatments that he cured him, but really he was in on the lie the whole time, put him in a little trap, and, uh, you know, a little bit more justice of the Jigsaw variety, just to uh, end things off on a high note like that. And since they went through the trouble of having Hoffman come back for that small cameo, I got a feeling we'll probably see him again too if they make another Saw movie after this, but, uh, you know, it's a nice little sprinkle on top for all the Saw fans who've seen every movie, want, like, a little bit of fan service in there, you know? Fan service can be a good thing as long as it's not used excessively, which I think uh, Saw X did uh, pretty well, I gotta say. Overall, Saw X is somehow arguably the best Saw movie of them all. It's really rare when you can say that a 10th movie in a franchise is the best one of them all. There are a couple weird little nitpicky things I have with the movie, but like how Tobin Bell and Shawnee Smith, they've obviously aged since the last time they played these characters in the original movies, but really I'm okay with it because I I'd prefer they do that instead of like spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to digitally de-age them and they just look like synthetic silly putty the whole time. And there's a couple like really tiny continuity goofs here and there like how this movie's supposed to take place in the early 2000s so you know, the technology and the vehicles are supposed to be of that time and for the most part it is accurate with the cell phones and computers and stuff but there's a couple moments where it's like oh that flat screen on the wall looks a little too 2020s for 2004, but again, that's really just grasping at straws here and doesn't ruin the immersion of the movie or anything like that. Jigsaw and Spiral, the two movies before this one, well, I liked them for what they were. I feel like they were just trying too hard to reinvent the wheel with these movies, when in reality, this kind of movie with Saw X is what we wanted all along. And seeing how they could get away with making, you know, more Saw sequels that take place in between the other movies like this, I'm like, you know what? I'm down. You want to make more really good Saw movies of this format? Alright, bring it on. I'm game. Let's go. So, I'm gonna give Saw X a gold unboxing machete. But if you want to see another video from me, I got just the thing right over here. Otherwise, subscribe if you live, talk, and buy movies, and we'll see you on the